Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Asiga Dental Webinar Series live from Sydney, Australia. My name's Graham Turner, and I'm the Global Operations Manager for Asiga. And the Dental Webinar Series will navigate all areas of dentistry from the laboratory to the clinic and cover, cover all applications in between, where 3D printing is an integral component to the digital workflow. Over the series, we will invite key dental design experts to join us to discuss how they've implemented 3D printing into their workflows. And we hope that you will find this to be a, a form of guidance, education, and an insight into dental 3D printing. So we hope you enjoy. The topic of this webinar is 3D printing, the full, full arch restorative workflows. And I'm delighted and really happy to have um, our special guest on with us today. Um, and I'd like to welcome Dimitri Leolios. How are you, Dimitri? Hey, everyone. Hey, Graham. Um, really delighted that I will be able to um, do this webinar for uh, a great company like Asiga. Uh, really a bunch of really pleasant guys if you ask me so um, good evening good day or good afternoon wherever is your time uh, time zone um, as Graham told you I'm Dimitris Yoyos I'm from Greece I'm living in a small in, a, in the biggest island of Greece Crete on a city called Hania. I will show you some, some pictures of my beautiful city uh, through the webinar. Okay, I think that. Uh, today we will discuss about uh, how I utilize 3D printing in my daily operations. And of course, we will focus on full arch restorations, either on implants or teeth or combined. Uh, which is kind of my specialty. And I will show you how much 3D printing has uh, helped me, make me more efficient, make me more cost effective, producing these big cases. And most of all, make, it, it made me a bit more, um, no more surprises, let's say, at the end result. So, yeah, if... So I think we are ready. As I told you, I live in uh, the city of Hania, in the island of Crete, in Greece. It's the western uh, city of the island. Um, after this whole COVID thing is over, I'm waiting for you to visit. I can assure you that you will sure enjoy all the sea, uh, all the food you can have, and all the hospitality from, uh, from us. This is the lab. I've been digital since 2011 when I bought my first scanner. And after the first scanner, it came the first milling machine, and then the second one, another scanner, a printer, another milling machine. Uh, so the lab grew with, uh, of course, the, the abilities of the digital world in, uh, in the industry. Um, it's like nine years since my first um, experience with a digital tool in our profession. And I can say that it, we have come a long way since then. Um, 3D printing, of course, it is not something new. It's, uh, as most of uh, the technologies that they are introduced in uh, dental world, first it's in the industry, in various uh, sectors of the industry, of course, in the medical field. I, I have seen like even 3D printed houses or even 3D printed food. And of course, during uh, 
a global crisis like the, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19, we saw that uh, 3D printing made, it was a really integral part of uh, anyone with a printer was able to print uh, protection uh, gear, like the faces that uh, you can see the fire that Asinga shared with us. And I came to realize that 3D printing is everywhere, all over us, for many, many uh, applications. Of course, in dental, for I think the past 15 years, it's been introduced first for, for um, printing copings and surgical guides. Now we can print pretty much anything from models to dentures to splints to uh, I have seen it, even printed zirconia, but of course it's uh, at the infant stage right now. But I, I'm sure that 3D printing will uh, keep us busy in the future with uh, new applications. Uh, now about dental printers. There are several kinds of dental printers. I'm not going uh, into technical details, but they are cheap printers. They are more expensive. They are really expensive printers, fast, slow, and that stuff. When I started printing, it was like three years ago, three and a half years ago, I bought a form labs. I thought that I would uh, introduce myself to 3D printing with a cheaper printer, so I wouldn't have to invest much. Um, I'm not sure whether this decision was good or bad for me, whether I, I did make any money or, um, or I just bro broke even or even lo lost any money. Because at some point, not that uh, late, I came to realize that this printer was not covering my needs. It was slow, it was expensive to run because it's a closed system. It was... Um, not that accurate, uh, lots of, of issues. So I thought to myself, maybe I should have invested in a better machine from the start. So I would just avoid all this pain and all this lost money. Then I, after researching, I, I, I found myself but uh, I decided that I will buy an Asiga printer. Why did I choose uh, the Asiga Max UV? It's accurate. I, I tested it and it was really accurate for, for my needs. It's an open system, so I can use more than 400 different materials. For sure, more than I will ever need. It's reliable. Um, I have the printer almost two years and I use it every day, almost all day long. So I, I can count the, the failed prints in the hand of my, in the fingers of one, my own hand. It's easy to use. You just follow the instructions. I, I hear people saying that they need to calibrate the printer every, like, I don't know, a month or two or three weeks or whatever. To be honest, guys, I have never calibrated the printer and I have never had any issues with the accuracy. Uh, simply, you don't need to do any of this. Of course, it's really fast. It's a, it was a, a really deciding factor for me uh, to choose this printer. And another factor that many people will not I think it's really important, but the, the, the Facebook community of Asiga is... I, I don't have words to describe it. It's really nice, helpful people all over the world. Even if the support is closed or whatever, and you need an immediate answer for a question, someone is there. Someone is there to help you, to guide you. And it's... It's really nice to know that people all over the world are at the same spot, at the same position, like you are, and they're just, you know, want to do, to, to get the, the 
things done. So I've been milling since 2012, all available materials from metal to PMMA, zirconia, high performance polymers, Emax, you name it. I've been milling it since 2012. Uh, I've been doing hand wax ups since the dawn of time. It, of course, it's, it's not true because I've been working for the past 15 years, but it certainly feels like it's from the dawn of time because I hate doing wax ups by hand. It's, I'm not good at it, I'm slow, I'm not making any money, I'm not... Uh, it doesn't make any sense for me to do it by hand. I used to uh, mill uh, the wax patterns to be pressed in lithium desilicate. All this before 3D printing came into my life. I started designing the wax ups and then printing the models, which it's a huge, huge time saver. And of course, it's the only way I, I, I can think that I, a lab can make actually money out of uh, a wax up. Because for me, okay, I'm experienced designer. I can have this full mouth restoration designed in less than an hour and then another hour to print them, let's say two hours work. And otherwise I would have to wax this for two days maybe. <laughs> because as I said, I'm slow, I'm not good at it. I don't like doing it. So this actually came as a really great solution for me. And it's one of the most profitable restorations I can do in the, in the laboratory nowadays. It also replaced the, the milling of the wax. Um, for this case, it's a full mouth case with uh, veneers, crowns, inlays, uh, breeds. So uh, normally if I had to mill all this wax, I would have to maybe have a milling time of five, six hours, maybe, I don't know, maybe more. This whole mouth was printed in less than an hour. And of course, I have the best pressing results or casting results in my career using the Asiga Delta model resin. I know it is not supposed to be used that way, but good friend of mine, Peter Harling from uh, the UK, from Manchester, he experimented a bit and he told me, dude, this resin works miracles with uh, pressing and I actually tried it and he was right. I have never seen pressings like that in my lab. And I follow all the protocols of working under microscope or, you know, all things are done how they are supposed to be done. But after I switched to um, printing and pressing, the Denta model, resin, all, 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 all things were, just all the problems that I had at times, you know, from time to time with pressing were solved. So thank you, Peter. Thank you, Asiga. Um, printing prototypes, I used to mill them, but again, the time is an issue because I want this prototype to be done quickly so I can either evaluate some things on the articulator because no matter how experienced you are on screen, uh, you're always uh, more experienced uh, when you have the, the, the actual work on the bench, on the articulator, and in your hands. So uh, this uh, prototype, I would have to wait like three or four hours to be in and keep my machine, my milling machine busy, milling something that it is cheap, while I, I, I could have been milling uh, zirconia, let's say, and actually make money. So, uh, printing came here and saved the day for me. And uh, lastly, uh, printed provision. Uh, I'm printing provisionals now. I'm not completely sold. I have tried some resins. I have 
I find the GCT temperature is really nice for provisionals. I will show some cases uh, later on the presentation. And again, time here is a really uh, deciding factor why choose printer over uh, a printed provisional over a, a, a milled one. And I'm also printing verification jigs for various uh, indications, either to check the accuracy or to check the position. And uh, it's, it's really, really, really um, good for us. That, uh, that this kind of things helps, uh, helps us avoid any future problems that can be related, especially for, for uh, you know, cases of uh, implants where we, we need accuracy to be really spot on. And of course, 3D printing gives us the ability to work with people with intraoral scanners that they can be in another city, in another country, in another continent. And this opens some uh, really, uh, uh, we have more the, the possibilities are really great for a small business like my lab or like the average lab out there. Uh, so since we are focused on uh, the full arches, I will share my protocol, how I do things, no matter what the material is, no matter um, how many implants. I'm, I'm talking about fixed, of course, not uh, about removables. Uh, first of all, I'm making a, a customized tray. Then I'm making the master model after I receive the impression. I make the master model and the antagonist. I'm uh, doing some bite trims that are screw retained so we can have the proper registrations uh, for the video. If we have a Facebook available, we use it as well. Then we are mounting the models on a semi-adjustable articulator. We have, of course, photo documentation, a provisional restoration, the verification jig, a printed resin prototype for aesthetic and functional evaluation, and then we are able to deliver the finished case. I, I have many clients from other cities or from other countries, so I needed to find a protocol that will actually uh, eliminate any uh, possible surprises during the uh, the progress of a case, because I think that we all 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 all, uh, all the technicians worldwide they are facing the same problem. They have faced the same problems at some point of their career. You know, just uh, I need this tooth to be shorter or make it wider, or you know, we have a bit of a cantilever or whatever can the, the axis is not correct the, the middle line is off I want to avoid all these things because I don't want to touch my finished restoration that I have put so much effort to make it beautiful and functional at the same time uh, so let's take some closer looks this is like what a customized tray looks like in my lab the master model I'm using, um, for implant cases, I'm using a zero expansion stove. Various verification jigs, either printed or uh, with a cold cure resin uh, or a light cure resin or plaster even. The screw retained by trim. And the mounting of the motors on the semi-adjustable articulator, as articulator, as I mentioned before. Uh, I, of course, if we have a Facebook, it's really welcome. So we can have the the, the jaw relation on the articulator. Photo documentation before we start the case. We have some photos. We're starting uh, to uh, to evaluate how things should go and make our plan. The provisional restoration, 
either mailed or printed. Uh, in this case, to be honest, that I'm sewing, I wouldn't try printing because I have too many pontics, uh, as you can see, because we were waiting on two implants. And this is a printed diagnostic prototype. Uh, this is something that I'm sending out to the office so that the patient can and the dentist can have it in the mouth placed and they can do whatever they want. They can grind it, grind some things off, you know, check the, the video if it's correct, the occlusal scheme and make all the necessary movements, uh, lateral pro the protrusion, the lateral movements, or do whatever they want. They can grind it off, they can add material, and we can make all these corrections needed uh, at this stage, because when, when I have it back, then I'm just copying whatever they have done, and, uh, at the final restoration, really minimal adjustment need to be made. This actually can stay in the mouth. In this particular case, it was, we, we made the trying just before the lockdown during the COVID. So it actually stayed in the mouth for three months. Of course, a resin that is suitable, this is with GC temp resin, so it's suitable for use in the mouth and for a provisional use. So the patient, he had his, uh, you know, his new teeth before he actually had them. So I, I think it's a big, uh, a big advantage for us. Yeah. And of course the final restoration after all these, all the above are done. We are really safe. We feel really safe delivering a restoration like this. And I'm pretty sure that I will not have it back for uh, adjustments because the canine was too long or we didn't have any uh, contacts on the occlusal or the occlusal of the molar or whatever the case might be. A uh, few tricks. So this is a part of a, a full mouth restoration. This is actually a case that I'm working right now. I'm printing the provisionals, as you can see, and then I'm printing again another set. So when I send it to the dentist, this is with a client of mine that he's in another island. Uh, he will uh, take the provisionals, place them, make any adjustments, and uh, do this procedure for both sets. Then when the time for the final impression is, uh, is right, he will send me the second set so I can have them and fix them on the master model that I will make and make the proper uh, uh, place, place the, the models on the articulators, mount them really safe. Because in my experience, the most reliable way for me to have the correct video is have the patients provisional and make the mounting. But of course, it, it is easy when uh, the, the, the patient is in the same city with me because I just need the provisional for one hour. Uh, but when the patient is from another city, things can get, you know, hard. You cannot leave him without a provisional. So this is something I came up and I thought that I would just print two sets of provisionals, send them out, have one in the mouth and send me the other one so I can make the mounting. For me, this is a really crucial part of, uh, for, for, for the big cases, when I'm doing big cases, because I'm starting from a, uh, from a point that I know that I have the, the, correct, uh, the correct video, the correct articula articulation.
and I'm doing this a lot. I'm, I'm using a button position in Zigs. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting more. Although the, the models made with the Asiga are really, really accurate, I trust more uh, the actual scan from the intraoral scanner. Uh, so far now, I, I don't have any uh, accuracy problems with implants uh, with the Asiga printer. I can say that I, I had some models from some really expensive and high-end printers. And to be honest, guys, I cannot see any difference and cannot justify why spend, you know, 100,000 or rent for 50K, a really expensive printer, while I can have the same result with uh, the everyday printer from a SIGA. In any case, I'm, I'm using this for all my cases uh, for uh, cement retained restoration, so I can be really um, positive about the abutment position that it is good because there are many variables. Um, in this case, the, the, the lab analog is not designed properly. It's a really small. It doesn't have any mechanical retention, so you can easily miss uh, the the correct position even for you know just one degree but in the mouth this just one degree will make a big difference so I'm doing this for uh, almost all my cases that at least that I need to layer porcelain if I don't have to layer porcelain I don't even print a model and now we will see some cases and actually um, uh, see how I'm doing these things, how I'm using the 3D printing uh, technology uh, for all these big cases. So now here we have a patient, she's age 53, she had like 20 years ago a car accident. Uh, so she, she had a big chunk of her um, upper uh, jaw removed due to the car accident, the bone uh, was not there. And she wanted to restore her, uh, her upper jaw. You can see here that we have a really weird situation where the left part of her teeth are going up. And because of the accident, you can see that the lower teeth have erupted. And this caused the the prosthesis she was wearing to be adjusted accordingly. Uh, so some things, uh, some some teeth were extracted, three implants were placed, and we're starting working on the case. Uh, this is a case that we work on uh, with um, titanium zirconia hybrids for the implant and some zirconia crowns. This is our initial design, okay, for the framework. This is the mill framework uh, for the implants. Seated on the model. And now here comes the, the printing. We print our, all of our designs before we mill them out of zirconia. We do that because we want to be safe. We don't want any surprises. It's easy for me to just, if, if we need any adjustments, just to add something or just to design from, from scratch and print again. Um, it's, it's really nothing for me, but imagine if I had this case done and then I send it over for a biscuit drying and then we needed to make some changes. It's not easy. It's not easy. And, and to be honest, I'm, I don't like working again on a case that I have spent time um, trying to make it look nice and function properly in the mouth. But here it's, it's, it's easy for me to do. 
After everything got approved, this is the finished case. Zirconia, ceramics, and uh, the gingiva is, uh, is made with composite. You can see here. Uh, some more pictures. You can see that the middle uh, implant is placed a lot on the palatal, but it was the only way we, we could place it um, because of the lack of bone due to the accident. And of course, uh, we tried to make it as much hygiene as possible. And this patient is really, uh, it's, she follows her, uh, her recall appointments. So this prosthesis will be removed and check if everything is clean. We have high polished um, titanium on the, on the bottom. Everywhere we can have super flaws or in the underdal brushes. So I'm pretty positive for the long-term success of this case. And here in the mouth, here it is placed. You can see how weird things are. It's not an everyday case. But the end result, I think it's satisfying. The patient herself, we, we managed to, to, to fix the, the, the cant we were seeing on the left side. And this is her smile. She, she was really happy with the result because as she told us, she was able to smile after 20 years. And <laughs> I think this is a really important uh, factor if we think about it. Yeah, we're making teeth, we, we are not curing cancer or, you know, making spaceships that will travel to another planet. But uh, I find the, the most satisfying thing in our profession is when I interact with the patients, I, I see lots of patients either for consulting or for state matching or for photos or whatever. and, and I really like it when they they share and they they are telling me you and the dentist you changed my life you you, you made me laugh again and during this time of of the pandemic I found out that you know the small things like the ability to laugh and smile is um, is really important maybe more important than we had in, in our mind while we were really busy. Uh, before before the, the world stopped. So, yeah. Let's see another case. So we have a patient. She's at her early 50s. She had zero teeth in her mouth. She had surgery where six implants were placed in each jaw. And uh, we inherited this case from... Uh, a dentist we have never worked before because uh, the lab that took over the case initially was not able to satisfy the patient. And the initial treatment plan was that we do two pretot kind of screw retained zirconia bridges. Um, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of uh, having um, on both toes. Uh, full zirconia because in, in this case we had some limitations because of the positions of the implants at some places and I was really afraid that if I made the zirconia bridges they would eventually fail with a crack of some kind. After I took the case and I evaluated things I recommended uh, to change the, the treatment plan and instead of zirconia bridges, we would do to BTT screw retained bridges. Uh, for those that they are not familiar with it, uh, the BTT bridges, they are combining po high performance polymer like PIC or PEC uh, or BioHPP and ceramic for the teeth, uh, lithium desilicate and composite for the gingiva. So, 
let's see. This is the, the initial provisional restoration that the other lab made for the patient. Although the shapes were not bad and uh, everything, you can see that they have totally missed uh, the axis of the teeth and the position, the correct position uh, re uh, regarding the face of the patient. In any case, we took from that, we kept the shapes that they were satisfying and we just make the provisional screw retained bridges. These are also printed with uh, GC temp, uh, temp print resin. You can see that we have uh, two screw channels on the labial. For the final restoration, we used the um, angle correction system uh, in order to have them on the palatal side. Uh, you will see that it, uh, it worked. You can see that we have beautiful results with printed provisional screw retain uh, with printed provisional uh, restorations as we can also characterize them really easy and fast. And this is actually the first case I did uh, with uh, for a long span for long term provisionals using a printed resin. This is a week after we can see that we have some, we started having some discoloration. We found out because afterwards that it was related to some eating habits of the patient. And this is like five months after they were placed. I'm not happy with the heavy discoloration, but this was a good, uh, a good test for the printed resins. But again, I'm, 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 I'm not blaming completely the resin because she had some weird habits regarding uh, eating and drinking. So we had this discoloration. So um, these are the, the peak frames. They are ready to receive the, uh, the, the teeth, okay. And I, I printed the teeth, my initial design, placed them on the, on the frames and sent them out for trying. Uh, the big advantage of this technique is that whatever, um, whatever adjustments are made uh, when the restorations are, are placed in the patient's mouth, I can simply take this tooth and press it, you know? I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to copy it. I don't need to, to do anything else. I just press it. So everything was adjusted and of course, some more adjustments regarding the shape uh, were asked from, uh, from uh, the dentist according to the patient's wishes. I took the teeth, I just added some wax, made the corrections that uh, they were requested, uh, made some corrections that I, you can see that I made uh, the margins larger on the canines and the central because I, I missed it uh, when I was designing the case. So being this, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's really easy to correct things. I pressed, finished the case, cement, everything, made the gingiva, and this is the finished case on the model. A lithium desilicate teeth, composite gingiva, and uh, pick frames on T basis, of course. You can see that we managed to correct the angle problem of the screw channels. Uh, using uh, 30 degree, uh, uh, using 30 degree correction for the screw channel on the central and the lateral on the upper. On the lower, we decided to uh, to leave the the two premolar implants as they were, as they were really easy to cover from uh, this. And this is the finished restoration placed in the mouth.
you can see that no adjustments were made on the occlusal surface of the uh, of of the bridges. So our goal not to have any surprises came. Uh, it, it was fulfilled, and I would like to thank my good friend from Leeds UK, Phil Reddington, who, who actually invented this technique with uh, Lee Mullins. Uh, and they were, they introduced me to this technique and saved me from a lot of pain doing these kind of cases. And I, I honestly believe that I actually deliver a better product for the, uh, for the patient as well. Not only it is easier for me and more predictable, but it is also better for the patient as well. And some more pictures here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. They, they look really natural in my eyes. And this is what we want, the patient to be happy, the, the patient to be able to smile without being hesitant about how they look. And this is the, the last case I'm going to share with you. We have a patient in the early 60s, uh, again, no teeth in his mouth, seven implants on the upper and five on the lower. Uh, we decided to make two titanium zirconia screw retain hybrids. It's um, a technique I first saw from Werner Sauer in Bryce Bay in Australia. Uh, he shared his cases through Facebook and I came to realize that, yeah, it's a pretty awesome technique because you have the strength of titanium or of metal and the aesthetics and safety of zirconia that you will not have chipping. All the metal ceramic uh, cases I have done, no matter how hard I tried, especially for implants, no matter how hard I, I tried, I always had tipping of the porcelain because the patients, you know, most of the patients that they, they are losing their teeth, they didn't lose, uh, they didn't lose them because they were cautious and really taking care of them. They lost them because most of the times either they were not, they didn't care to, to brass, <laughs> to say that simple. So what makes you think that they will be cautious after they, are they have the new restorations? They are not. I'm making the splints to, to protect the work and they, are, they almost never wear, wear the splint because they don't find it comfortable when they are sleeping. So yeah, if I deliver a more secure uh, restoration, I will be sleeping easier at night, all right? So here is the, the, it's the digital design for the media provisionals. Uh, we had an implant level um, initial impression. I placed the, the multi-unit abutments in the lab and then I sent the, the provisionals that I designed with the multi-units and another set of provisionals, as I described earlier in my presentation, that they were going to be used when the final impression on multi-unit abutment level would be taken. So I could have the, the second set of provisionals, just screw them on the models, and mount them together. So we are uh, with this this way. We are uh, a little, we are reducing one appointment for the registrations. The provisional on the model PMMA on uh, uh, this one is milled. Uh, PMMA on titanium basis and placed 
in the mouth. The result was not bad, but the patient decided he wanted to have some changes. So when the time came and I had the final impressions, I made a new design, I printed some new uh, prototypes, I sent them over so we can make the trying. The patient was happier with those uh, shapes and the arrangement of teeth. So after that, uh, I used this design to make my titanium bars. I milled the bars. And after that, I printed another prototype that it would sit on the bar. I cement them together and send them all for trying, for frame trying and for um, at the same time, aesthetic trying, aesthetic, functional, speeds, uh, and everything. As I told you, this, in this case, it was uh, during the, the lockdown because of the COVID pandemic. So this actually may, uh, stayed in the mouth for five months. After all, the lockdown was lifted, we were able to continue. So now I just milled the new, uh, the same file, since no adjustments were made, I milled the, the, the same file out of Zirconia. And this is the finished restoration, after I layered my ceramics. So this is a titanium bar with Zirconia cemented on top of it directly milled to the multi-unit abutments. You can see here the, the frame that uh, comes in, uh, that touches the, the gingiva. And the finished case, more pictures of the finished case. A small video. <laughs> All the proper uh, movements are made. Of course, they were made first digitally. And then you can see that the, the result on the articulator is the same as well. The jaws can move freely in every direction. We have contacts where we should have. And everything was good. So, this is after delivery, zero. Um, adjustments were made for uh, for this full mouth case. So uh, that was the end. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation as much as I did. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon somewhere in the world. For any questions or um, whatever you want to ask, and you can contact me uh, either uh, through my email or through Facebook. So uh, that's it from me. That's great. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, that was really um, that was good to good to watch and to see those the detail on those cases. Thank you for that. I actually, part of my intro, I, I missed out quite a, a bit of a chunk of um, just some instruction for the viewers to um, engage with us with some questions if they had any regarding the cases. Um, but fortunately, some have come through. Um, so there's, there's one here, which is, um, I'll just try and structure this. So when when pressing dental model, do you do you use any special process in the pressing stage, or is it just do you just follow the same procedures that you would? No, I'm normally? using uh, I'm using a special process that uh, Peter introduced me to uh, nine fifteen degrees Celsius for uh, and one hour in the oven, 
I'm using uh, Anax West uh, investment, and I literally have zero failures doing this simple thing. Just 9.15 for one hour, directly in a hot oven. No uh, slow programs, no nothing. I, I just 9.15 leave the, uh, the refractor material in for one hour and then I'm pressing as usual. No other special tricks or whatever. But I can only speak for uh, Anax West investment, okay? I'm, I'm, I don't know if I, I have seen people doing it with other brands as well, but I can only speak for myself for this investment. Yeah, okay, good. Um, with, with materials, um, have, you, have you printed in permanent 3D printing materials? And if so, which is best? So I think that's referring to some of the uh, more recent releases of some permanent um, crown and bridge materials for permanent use. Have you yeah. tried any of those? I haven't tried anything yet as my uh, usual cases, they are not uh, focused on using this kind of materials as, as I'm more focused on ceramic materials for the definitive restoration. So I haven't actually tried any of these, but um, I, will, I will try in the future because I will do the same thing with the titanium bar for uh, when I'm asked for acrylic hybrids because I want to, I, I don't want to have, um, you know, um, whenever I'm doing an acrylic hybrid, most of the times at some point of its life, I will have a denture teeth pop out, you know, it will chip or whatever. So I want to be able to make a one piece uh, resin, restoration so i would avoid any uh, tooth cracking or chipping or whatever uh, i maybe sound a bit uh, mental with chipping but uh, i have in my mind that even the most beautiful restoration if it chips it's a failure so you have to redo it and with the amount of big cases i'm doing i just need to be as safe as I can, you know, I don't, I cannot afford having uh, 20 remakes in a year, business-wise, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, mm. yeah, but I will, I will definitely try some of the newer stuff, I'm just waiting for the dust to settle down, I always don't want to be the first to try something new. Yeah, I think we're all waiting for that dust, that same dust to settle. Um, there's some more questions here. Um, how long does the GC temp material last for? The longest I have it is for the case I, I sold. It was five months in the mouth. Okay. These two bridges you, you saw. Uh, it was five months. Other than the discoloration, that I repeat, it was related in uh, the nutrition habits of the patient. Uh, we had zero problems. The strength was there. The, everything worked really fine. Uh, for, for, I, can, I can recommend it. I can recommend this uh, resin as I have used it since before it's re it was released. As I'm... Uh, an opinion leader for GC and I had the, uh, the resin for some testing before it was released, some lab testing. And I have been using it since it was released and I'm really happy with the results. I, I had one failure, but I was really pushing the material to its limits because I had a really big span of Pontix that I was like 90, percent sure that it would break and 
I, we agreed with uh, this client of mine, which is a good friend, so uh, I, I, I can afford to be more, uh, you know, uh, not so professional, let's say, <laughs> towards him. And we agreed that we can test it, and if it fails, I already had uh, a mild one ready. So when it failed, we just uh, replaced it. But I came to realize that uh, seven pontics there were too much for uh, for the resin to to withstand. Um, and the, I think this is probably related as well. It, it's saying what is the best material company for provisionals? What 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 is the best material company? Do you prefer for provisional prosthetics? Uh, my preference is uh, is as I said earlier, GC, and um, I have also tried the Detox uh, resin. Uh, people from Detox, they were kind enough to send me some for testing. Mm. I have seen also some promising results. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is prettier, to be honest. And I'm just waiting for the results, uh, how it behaves in the mouth. Sure, printed resins, they are not as strong as um, milk PMMA. So in my mind, we should do case selection where we need PMMA, where we need metal and PMMA or resin or whatever, and where we can use resin, just printed resin. So it's, it all depends on or, or, or how much do we respect the limits of its material and the the how it was made for for what use it was made. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, just because we're talking about materials, I might just um, I might just bring my just my screen on. Um, This, this just covers um, another question regarding the, which materials can be used. This, is a, this, this um, screen just shows the sort of a snapshot of our material library, the Asiga material library online. Uh, we've got um, curing profiles for, an op which are optimized and validated uh, for all of those material brands and all the materials that they manufacture. Um, so there's a range of materials there that you can you can have a play with, which is great because there's a lot of development, there's a lot of engineering, there's a lot of um, research that's going into these new 3D printing materials, and a, a permanent solution is one of those. Um, which which model resin do you use? I, I presume, yeah. Which model? Which model material do you uh, use? The Sega Denda model. Resin. Okay. Um, I have used lots of it and it has never failed me. And I think that it is uh, a great material, really great material. There's another one here. There's, there's lots of messages just saying thank you, Dimitri, which is, you know, it's a, it's a great presentation. There's one here. It says, for the fabrication of press crowns for BTD bridges, do, do you use ceramic layering or do you press full contour like Emacs Multi? Um, again, it depends on the case. Uh, I, as, as a general uh, rule, let's say, I'm pressing uh, the posterior teeth on full contour and... At some cases, I'm doing some micro layering for the anterior uh, units. I'm not pressing that much of uh, multi uh, Emacs uh, ingots because I can press more with the normal pressing procedure. But uh, for sure, it's a great ingot. I really like how it looks, and it's uh, you, you can use it. Uh, for full contour, of course, it will look a lot better than the one-shape ingots that they are uh, out there. 
uh, and if s- someone is um, cares to know, I'm, I'm, the, the ingot of choice I have for these kind of cases is LT for, from Emacs. Most of the times, I have done one case with uh, multi. Came out great, but it's uh, harder to press because of the procedure that you can only press four at a time, uh, and because of the of the size, it's it can be less than four, so it's not really productive. Of course, uh, it's uh, it's its lab has uh, its own workflow. I have seen people milling. Uh, Emacs or lithium desilicate in any case. So this is a, a nice solution as well and maybe faster for some. Uh, yeah, this is uh, what, what, what we do here. I can see another question which post curing device I'm using. I'm using the NK Optic with uh, argon gas protection. Uh, 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 sorry, nitrogen, non, not argon, sorry. Uh, and following the instructions of its, uh, uh, for, for its material I'm, I'm post-curing. Uh, I can see another question here asking if I'm pressing Denta model uh, resin for Emacs. The answer is yes. Um, Using Denta model actually for pressing all my pressing and all my uh, uh, casting to metal, and the result is the same every time. Perfect. <laughs> I know that you guys in Asiga you didn't make the resin for this purpose, but it works. <laughs> yeah, I know we were we were quite amazed when we saw the results that. Um, some of you you guys were having and look it, you're right it wasn't something that we designed we, that material wasn't developed for that application but if our customers can find an application other than what we design it for then perfect you know we're, we're really supportive of that so it's great that you can you can use it in that in that way and to get the results um, more importantly yeah Um, the, the, I've got another question here, which is, are you using 4K? So you're using the Pro 4K? I'm Your, using the Max UV. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have the Pro 4K. I wish I had the Pro 4K. <laughs> uh, the next one I'm looking at is, is this one, this, uh, this printer. It's, uh, I will need another printer like in the next year. So this is what I will be looking. And if I cannot afford it at the time, I will go again with another UV, Max UV. So to answer the question, no, I'm not using it, but I wish I was. Uh, do, do, do you hear me, Asiga? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> or, or, or Emma. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll 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 talk we'll talk more about that. Um, okay. Dimit, we'll, we'll we'll carry on that conversation. Um, let me just check here if there's any more questions before we come to an end. No, I think that's. Oh, here we go. Oh. You've probably seen this pop up. So just regarding the tooth supported printed provisionals, does it, is it completely biocompatible and keep the gingiva healthy? Yes, because you are able to polish whatever you want. At least this is what I'm doing. I'm not just leaving the provisional as it came out of the printer. I'm printing with 50 uh, microns. So of course you can see some um, the layers, some 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 uh, spots from the layers. So I'm working on it, polish it, and then I am sandblasting using a composite primer. Then I'm using a, 
uh, light your glaze and that's it. I'm having zero complaints about this, this technique. So have you, um, when, when you finish that then, have you ever just polished the provisional and, and used it just polished or have you always coated it with? No, I, I'm always coating. If it's meant to be used as a provisional, I'm always coating it. If it is meant to use just for a trying, uh, a, a trying in the mouth, I'm just polishing yeah, I, I don't. I'm not using glaze, but if it is supposed to to stay in the mouth even for a week or whatever, I'm 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 using uh, light cured glaze. Okay. Okay, great. Well, you got you got a nice response for your for the answer to that question. So thanks, Dimitri. Um, so I think if, if there's no other, if nobody's got any other questions, um, maybe we should, um, yeah, wrap this up. So look, I'd like to just, um, I'll just, I've just got another slide here. Um, just to let everybody know that we will have more of these webinars um, and you can find information around Asiga. And also, you could be you be able to track Dimitri down online. He, Dimitri's contact details can be made available, and we can we can post that as a follow up um, yep. on the webinar. Um, but we've got a number of different channels you can keep up to date with with Asiga and our activities. And thanks everybody for watching and for logging in and taking the time to be part of this webinar. And Dimitri, I am really happy and grateful for you to put some time aside. I know it's your evening there now. Um, and I know that you've got a little one at home. Um, so thank you again. That was really, it was a really nice presentation. And yeah, we'll look forward to doing something else again in the future. Thank you uh, for uh, everything, uh, uh, for this, for the, all the support throughout uh, these two years. I have the printer. It's been a great ride for me. So I am more than happy to participate in any future events as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks again for, for coming on board. That's great. And I was going to say that I'd look forward to seeing you at, um, at IDS next year, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Yeah, it's uh, all, you know, <laughs> nobody knows what will happen. So, I'll, I'll just I'll just come to Crete for a holiday instead. Yeah, yeah you, I think this that, is a better idea. Yeah, that's a much better idea. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you take care. Keep well. Um, and thanks, thanks again to everyone who's logged in. And you too, yeah, you we'll, thank, you all. thank you all. We'll see you online again soon. All right. Uh, goodbye, man. everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.